Hello everybody, today is January 11th, 2011. It's time to see what happened with my predictions from 2010 and to make a few predictions for 2011. I'll start off by showing you what I said in 2010. Uh, we'll look at that right now. A few um, predictions for 2010, just for fun. Um, I'm looking for silver to reach $33 an ounce this year sometime and gold to reach about $1,700 an ounce. Um, and I, unfortunately, I think unemployment's gonna head up near 12%. So I overshot on gold um, by a few hundred dollars, and I came real close on silver. With uh, Silver was about $18 an ounce when I made that prediction on January 4th, and it closed at $30.90 on December 31st. So. I was only um, $2.10 off from nailing the, the high s silver price for the year. And then on the jobs, you know, I'm not even going to attempt to make a prediction this year on the unemployment. I, mean, I think we've been over 15% for more than a year now. The government's going to continue to manipulate the numbers down, not count everybody who's not working. So um, I think I, I said it was going to go up to 12%. It's right near 10. It's pretty much didn't change. but. I don't know, that's <laughs> almost impossible prediction when you're dealing with uh, numbers that are, you know, being manipulated. So anyway, I'm just going to forget that. But this year I'd like to predict um, four things. I'd like to predict a gold price of $1,900 an ounce. And I'd like to predict a silver price of $55 an ounce. Um, you know, I think in the first half of this year, I think... Uh, we can see $42, $43 an ounce silver. That's quite possible. There's a lot of exciting things shaping up in the silver market. Um, we have, uh, oh wait, before I go into that, uh, let me say I wanted to see copper. Copper is at about 2.85 cents per pre-1982 penny, 95% pennies. Um, it's about $4.30 a pound right now. So I'm going to predict a $6 a pound copper price this year. That will push the pennies up near 4.5 cents for those pennies. And this roll here will be somewhere around $2.25. This 95% uh, copper penny roll right now is worth um, almost $1.50. You know, it's a 50 cent roll of pennies. Uh, I'm predicting over $2, about $2.25 $2 2 on that. And then I think we're going to see four dollar and fifty cent gas again, like before. Um, you know, mainly the gas goes up because it takes more dollars to purchase them. It's sold in in U.S. dollars. And you know, India just said that they're talking to Iran about buying who they buy their second amount, second most amount of oil from. They're talking about doing a gold deal with them. You know, so they're purchasing gold, um, which is kind of interesting today I picked up on that so long term you know the dollar is just going to continue what it's done since 1913 since the institution of the Federal Reserve's lost 957 percent of its value it's going to continue to go down but this year for some reason I'm feeling like we're going to have a little mini rally in the dollar now I was expecting the market to crash at the end of last year along with a lot of other people but you know I I guess I underestimated the Fed as much, you know, as far as the printing they were going to do. Um, they've been pushing up this market. It just continues to climb. It's, you know, P.E. ratios are like at 22, I think. I mean, extremely overvalued stock market right now. I wouldn't have much in the, you know, personally, this is my opinion, but I wouldn't have much in blue chips and things like that. Um, you know, any big companies. I have some silver miners, which will follow the market down. Um, if it goes down, but I think, uh, you know, that's the only thing I'm really invested in right now is some mining companies in the stock market and some rare earth element mining. Uh, those are quite exciting what's happening there. I've been meaning to do a video on that. China has cornered 95% of that market. I mean, there's no rare earth element m mining companies in the U.S. I mean, there's a couple trying to get going again, but China has totally cornered that market, and they've cut, you know, um, exports by half, you know, this year. So, these small rare earth element companies with proven reserves have been 
jumping lately. And, you know, this is an exciting market. It's um, not a lot of people know about it. It's, it's in everything. It's in a lot of our weapons, our defense system. The rare earth elements are necessary for the whole green movement. So I also want to mention that the richest man in the world, Carlos Slim, who this year passed Bill Gates and has 53.5 billion. Gates is at 53 billion, so he just barely passed him. Uh, I wanted to say that he's jumping into the silver market. It hasn't happened yet, but he's looking at buying a major silver producer in Mexico, you know, a major mine. He can't go into the physical silver market because it would just drive it straight up. Because, you know, the silver market's really small. It's only like a $30 billion market, which is extremely small compared to other markets. Now, if he just puts 5% of his wealth into the, you know, that's $2.5 billion. You put that into a $30 billion market, it's going to shoot it straight up. So, you know, the, the way for him to get involved without shooting the market up $10, $20 an ounce is, is for him to buy a, a silver producer, you know, a mining company. So that's what he's looking at doing. We'll see if he does that. So, you know, you have to look at these men that have done well, that have, you know, accumulated a lot of money. I mean, if you want to make a good investment, you look at some of the things that they're interested in. Now, I don't know what prompted him to see it at, you know, at this price. He should have been in silver, you know, a couple of years ago, in my opinion, but he sees an opportunity now he, that he doesn't want to miss out on. So I think, you know, he wants to get in on it now. Uh, there's another a billionaire, Thomas Kaplan, uh, recently just put two billion dollars. He says he's going all in. He doesn't see anything else that he can confide in, you know, have, have a lot of um, confidence in. So he's going to put two billion dollars of his personal wealth into gold. And I think 2011 is going to be the year of the major players coming into the market. I think you're gonna, this way, this is happening right now, this is going to be the wave of, of 2011. That's sort of how, it, you know, it, I feel like it's going to be going. So in closing, I wanted to look at the size of the silver market. I want to compare it to, um, you know, like a five trillion dollar gold market, give or take, and there's a 36 trillion dollar stock market worldwide, and the bond market's about 72 trillion, and then you got a 1,000 trillion derivatives market. So one quadrillion dollar derivative market. Now, I've done a video earlier on a 1.4 quadrillion. Now, I've, I've heard all these numbers around one quadrillion, but it, it's a huge market. It's what brought down the financial system in 2008. It was the derivatives that had gone bad, and they put a band-aid on that. But, you know, that hasn't been solved. There's still a huge derivative market out there. You bring the whole system down. Um, so, Goldman Sachs recently, just I think today or yesterday, came out saying that Facebook, they're putting a price tag on or a value on Facebook of 50 billion. So according to Goldman Sachs, Facebook is more valuable than the entire silver market by 20 billion dollars. So, you know, it's like 30 billion dollar silver market and a 50 billion dollar Facebook company value. That just shows you how small silver is. So when you get these big players like the richest man in the world jumping into the silver market, you know, sky's the limit.